This is a review of a political ideology or perhaps a rebranding scheme for the distant right offered by the academic agent. Now previously, another gentleman by the name of Keith Woods reviewed one of his earlier videos which argued that ideology isn't real and it's basically just the elites justifying their power and to put it slightly, he didn't receive that critique rather well, so there is a high chance that the same thing will happen to me, although I'm happy to talk to him about it. But nonetheless, in the present time, I think the so-called sensible center is either a form of trolling gone wrong or perhaps the worst contemporary floating idea on the dissident right. Now, the primary reason I decided to even record this video is because the academic agent has scored very similar to me on a philosopher personality test, yet when it comes to political ideology, he reached almost the opposite conclusion than me. And as a person who invented or in process of inventing a political ideology myself, I thought it would be pretty fun for me to review another person's ideology, which to some degree was inspired by similar philosophers, yet reached dimensions metrically opposed conclusions and prescriptions. To begin with, you should probably familiarize yourself with the video that I'm going to critique and if you are too lazy for that, then I will let the academic agent make the case for himself so I'm not accused of taking him out of context. We have done that under the rubric uh, or under the label of dissident right, but the time has come for us to uh, put that label away for various reasons while retaining all of the things that we've learned and presenting those ideas uh, in a different way, a way I'm calling the sensible center. None of the issues have changed. None of the way that we are, um, none of the things that we're actually advocating have changed. It is simply the presentation and the framing of those ideas. Thus, the goal of this new ideology slash rebranding scheme is to subversively present dissident right ideas as the centrist ideas, in fact as the sensible center, almost implying these ideas will be agreed upon by actual centrists like Elon Musk, Matt Taibbi, Tim Pool and Barry Weiss, and others who will find it sensible, I suppose. So the example goes like, the far left extreme wants to import half a million foreign students, while the centrist position would be to cut the already existing graduates in number by half, thus implying that the far right political extreme would probably ban education outright and even make it a crime. Well, fortunately such a position does not exist. Or here's another example. Let's abolish democracy, restrict immigration and fight wokeness because the left wing apparently agrees with it, except that they don't. It sounds absolutely outlandish given existing public opinion and this is why I said that it could be a form of trolling, especially considering it was given birth in a tweet addressed to Sargon of Akkad who then popularized it. But then seeing other tweets and watching the video, I came to the conclusion that it's not a joke, but in fact is a legitimate political ideology that has claims on political deliberation, so thus I will have to review it. Right off the bat I should say that despite me being on the right and sharing some of the dissident rights positions, I do not see myself as part of the dissident right, and not just for the reasons that academic agent proposes, which is... The chap on the left here is repellent. Okay, to the lizard brain, to any other person, he is repellent. You don't want to be like this guy. Whereas the guy on the right, he's everything that other people want to be. So it's attractive to embody this frame of the sensible center. I simply do not share many of the assumptions of the dissident right, but I am definitely not part of the mainstream right either, and thus I find myself in a strange position. Anyways, despite claiming that he isn't actually centrist in half of his videos and posts, in the other half of the video and tweets, academic agent calls his position as the sensible centrist position, which is representative of the actual centrist, while labeling the mainstream left wing as extreme. Establishment position is actually the extreme one and our view is the sensible one and it must always be framed in that way regardless of what the issue is. They're calling anybody who disagrees with them extremists whereas in fact they are the ones who are extremists. Given that we embody the center we are the ones who get to dictate 
uh, who is extreme and who isn't. Now, I suppose first I will debunk that assertion before talking about the strategy and to what extent appealing to moderates is a good idea or not. The idea of a sensible center actually dates to John Neal, who wrote the book The American Extremist, that contains the thesis that orderlies have constructed a system that oppresses us schizos and that these orderlies are really the extreme ones and not us schizos. The book went as far as to suggest that people like Dylan Roof have no agency and even though they have killed a lot of people, it's the liberal system that is at fault for this. Uh, who is an extremist? It's Wolfie Blitzer, to quote Michael Savage. Blinky Wolfie Blitzer. It's, it's Cass Sunstein, it's Mike Pompeo, it's Jonathan Greenblatt, it's the people who can actually hurt you and ruin your lives and are doing so from such a particular point of view. And although I do agree that Jonathan Greenblatt and other leftists are too extreme to be leading a civic society, their views are unfortunately not extreme in the sense that most Americans and the American elites agree with them. And the argument that liberals are the extremists, while we incel chuds are the real sensible centrists, simply sounds bizarre in this context. Generally, public opinion trends in left's favor, both over time and right now. The only thing started to drift in our favor in the recent years were the changing social attitudes towards the transgender movement, yet the centrist position regarding it remains as do not do drag queen story hour and mutilate minors, but at the same time you can do what your body as you want and I will even use your preferred pronouns if you look the gender you claim to be. If you don't believe me, you can just look at the poll on any particular topic. But the best way to actually determine where the culture is at large is through looking at institutions which define culture and its centrist position would not be on the actual center of the political things or to the left of center, it would be left wing. Thankfully not far left, but still not very good either. How do I know that? Well, I look at the ideological identification of different people, but also the political positions that they hold. For instance, conservative MPs are way more to the left than their voter base, to a point of being as left as the labor voter base, while they are considered to be right-wing by everyone to the left of them, which is every single party in the parliament. Yet the most telling example of where the institutional center is are the test results of the chat GPT bot which are constructed through a bottom-up loading of the algorithm with mainstream political knowledge. And these results are left-wing, sorry to disappoint you, representative of establishment liberals who scored 100% leftist progressive on another test. So not very centrist, in fact if you want to see how actual centrists are being treated, just look Look at the meltdown at Elon Musk who decided that he will apply Twitter rules equally to both the left and the right, thus affirming the sentence that equality really feels like an oppression when you're no longer in control. Now don't get me wrong, I resent this state of affairs just as much as academic agent does. But acting dishonestly as if your position, which is let's abolish democracy, is actually the centrist position just not gonna fly with like 95% of the people. What's perhaps most ironic about this is that about a year ago the academic agent himself estimated the amount of people that agree with him to be about 5% in the West. And now ask yourselves how these 5% were to constitute a supposed sensible center given centrism implies a roughly equal amount of people both to the left and the right of them. What the hell will be to the right of them? To quote a conversation that appeared on Charlemagne's telegram, is Thomas not a sensible centrist? He was too sensible to be allowed on telegram. Thus you can essentially invent any ridiculous shit and claim it is the centrist position as it exists between two imagined diametrically opposed positions, while the irony is that one of those diametrically opposed positions is your own and actual centrists will decipher that. Funny enough, although I made fun of this supposed sensible centrism, a lot of we seem to have embraced it by forwarding my memes even though I was clearly making fun of them. Now, at the same time, we both know that leftists are doing the exact same thing, but to a much larger extent. If there was an ideological compass of the left, 
it would be something like this. And I'm not making this thing up, by the way, it is actually supported by actual polling and Jonathan Hyde's data. Leftists estimate almost any right winger as a far right schizo and as Jonathan Hyde has argued, it is because they operate under a false moral foundation compass, which is not balanced, thus they aren't able to understand where the other side is coming from. And believe me, it is especially concerning because they are doing this while they are controlling controlling our institutions. Yoel Roth, the guy who was responsible for banning Donald Trump off Twitter despite it being an abuse of power according to Twitter's own commission, is the best example of this, as he handles himself on public as a moderate while he thinks that Nazis are literally in the White House. In addition to his efforts of normalizing gay porn and dating among minors, which I'm sure is totally fine among most of his colleagues, 99% of whom donate to the Democrats and happen to have as fucked up of a moral compass as he has. But we do not, and we understand that and we can call out on their bullshit. So don't think we have to lie and deceive the public by pretending we are something that we're not. Just like it is demonstrably not the case that Stephen King comprises the center. If you are a member of the dissident right and rebrand yourself as a centrist, it would imply that you ought to embrace actual centrist positions because we live in a society that defines what a centrist is. Thus, centrism would serve as a de-radicalization tool, and if you want to claim that you're a centrist while believing in an extreme position such as women rights should not exist, which by the way I do not share to make this clear, other centrists will not recognize you as a fellow centrist, and you either finish your LARP or actually embrace centrist values and thus be de-radicalized. That is because centrism is a contextual position. It is nothing in and of itself, unlike, let's say, paleo-libertarianism, or what I advocate for, which is right-wing progressivism. There are no fixed positions to the center, it is dynamic and it is different across all societies and across times, and probably among the Taliban, a person like the academic agent might be regarded as a sensible centrist, but definitely not in the West. But think of those centrist values for a moment. What do they even represent? Actual centrists are low IQ and in an environment of extreme polarization, there are basically no centrists left. So even if you appeal to them, you will be preaching to the choir. Best thing you could do is to appeal to the general public on issues like immigration, which slightly tilts in our favor, yet almost nobody wants to end immigration totally, as it is proposed by Sargon of Akkad. But here's the pessimistic part. When boomers die and Gen Z grows up, the center position will cease to work in our favor even on that. So why not we embrace something much better than appealing to the left-leaning center or to claim that you are something which you are objectively aren't? Academic agent said that dissident right isn't cool. And I agree with that. Although he failed to recognize that sensible centrists not only do not exist, but they are less cool than the dissident right, IQ-wise, strategy-wise, and of course, position-wise. Thus, we are back at the question of rebranding. However, what I propose instead of this sensible centrist LARP is not merely a rebranding of our political ideology, it is reorienting its foundational myth from conservation to progress towards a more right-wing society. If the so-called sensible centrists are cool, right-wing progressives sure are much cooler. It's a new ideology, unlike all other right-wing ideologies tried before, it isn't afraid of transparency, it's forward-thinking, it is defined as progress, and it is inseparable from science, which among other things is used to justify this ideology. But at the end of the day, it shares most of the end goals of the so-called dissident right. And just like postmodern neo-Marxists use the infrastructure of liberalism to push society in their direction, so does my ideology presupposes a total compatibility with liberalism, although unlike the postmodern neo-Marxists, it would push society into an opposite direction. Into a more right-wing direction that is underpinned by truth, ethics, high culture and the meritocratic hierarchy. 
The primary difference between what I offer and this sensible centrism is that sensible centrism operates, or at least pretends to operate, within an existing political spectrum. My ideology, however, attempts to shift it to the right. It doesn't exist within culturally determined relationships between the two imagined extremes. It shifts the discourse towards an entirely new political horizon, so that the other middle bros model their politics accordingly with the already shifted discourse, not the other way around, as academic agent proposes. And if you got excited or you want to hear more about this new ideology, then I released an hour and a half video explaining it that is available on YouTube and also on Odyssey. But if you don't like my ideology because it's too liberal and you're an anti-liberal crusader who wants to advocate for sensible centrism subversively, well, here's what you can do. A more pragmatic approach would be to advocate for politics that stems out of more balanced moral foundations, so that equality and harm avoidance aren't the main criteria for doing politics, while in-group loyalty isn't left behind, which is how politics is unfortunately done right now. You should therefore make populist arguments for why the average population, which is way more conservative than the elites, should take precedent over the power of the elites, but it would automatically drive you towards populism and direct democracy, which is something that academic agent argues against. Quite paradoxical, considering the best way to advocate his own ideology would force him to embrace democracy. But thankfully, right-wing progressivism does not face these moral dilemmas. Unlike the dissident right at large, which is confused and disorganized, we aren't appealing to the disorganized masses that aren't able to force their own demands through a civic society. And although I do agree with academic agent that it is the time to rebrand, his solution is not a good solution. It will fail, as did other right-wing movements that lack a rigid definition or good defense epistemology, and who are comprised of people without political identity and without any elite support. Anyways, see you later.